Okay, let's continue on our journey with the Arduino Student Kit. In this video, we're going to start Lesson 2 and talk about some of the concepts found in there. Well, while, while building circuits, we've mentioned the terms voltage, current, and resistance. But in this video, we're going to introduce your multimeter and show how to measure these things. All right, let's review the, the three quantities that we're going to measure. Okay, voltage, like the voltage of a battery, that's basically like the electrical force causing electrons to move through the circuit. Some people call it the electromotive force. And we measure that in the units called volts, abbreviated with the letter V. And just to mention, there are two kinds of voltage. There's direct current voltage and there's alternating current voltage, AC and DC. In these lessons, we're only going to be using direct current DC. So we won't mention AC very much at all. <clears throat> all right, the, another quantity is resistance. This is the resistance to flow of electrons. So some materials pass electrons from atom to atom easier than others. So a piece of wood, for example, or a piece of rubber is an insulator, so it's a, it has a very high resistance. And metal is a good conductor with a very low resistance. But some of these components called resistors are kind of halfway in between. They're meant to resist the flow of electrons, but in a very controlled way. All right, the other quantity is called current, which is the actual flow of electrons through the circuit. And we'll show in a minute here, to, to measure this, we actually have to put our meter in the circuit. So the flow of electrons through the components actually also flows through the meter and back to the, the power source. <coughs> All right, so let's get out the multimeter from your, your kit. <clears throat> now, one of the first things you might have to do, de depending on, it actually came in the kit with the battery not installed. So it's a little tricky. You have to kind of pull this rubber thing off from the top and lift up this little stand. In the bottom here, there's a little door fastened with one screw. Take that one screw out and you... you you put your install your battery with the little clip on the top. Now I actually had to take these two screws out also because my little clip was kind of stuck underneath and I had to like loose loosen the wires a little bit. But anyway, that's the one thing you have to do one time is to put the put the battery in. So I'll put that back together. Okay, so let's just look at the parts of this here. We have our, our multimeter. It has a couple buttons at the top. It has a rotary range selector. And it has three different holes here where we install our test leads. And then our, our test leads are these black and red wires with a connection on one end to install into the meter and on the other end we, we call these metal things the probes that we're going to touch to measure a voltage. So the first thing to do to connect up, we connect up our, our test leads. Now the one in the middle here is called COM. That stands for common. Don't confuse that with in your Arduino integrated development environment, the port is called a COM port or communication. That's COM there stands for communication, where here it stands for common, or is another word for the ground, or it's the thing that's in common to all the readings we're going to take. So I'll insert the black test lead in there. Now the red one, there's two possible places it can go, but for everything we're going to do in these lessons, we're going to use the one on the right, which does all three kinds of measurements. There's volts, ohms, the omega symbol, or 
amps are actually milliamps. This other one is for measuring larger current up to 10 amps and we're not going to be measuring that so we're never going to use that side. So you can install your two test leads this way and you can leave them there forever. <coughs> Alright, let's look at the the ranges. So this knob is just like a range selector. It's starting with off at the top. And you have to remember after you're taking your readings to turn it back off or you're just wasting your battery. If you leave it on for weeks you might run the battery down. So the first set of ranges, notice they're all in white, are, are direct current voltage scales. As opposed to the some more in white, if I turn the other way, those are the AC voltage ranges that we're not going to use. One thing I do want to show you though is notice where it says volts here. It's got a line with dots under it. That stands for direct current. And on the other side it's got a little what's called a sine wave or a little squiggly. That stands for alternating current. We're, remember we're not going to use those. I just want to show you that those symbols are used elsewhere. So here's a, here's a uh, power supply to a computer. And notice here it says the input to this device is 100 to 240 volts and it's got the little squiggle you can see that for for alternating current. But its output is 12 volts and it's got a line with the dot dots under it. That's the symbol used for direct current. So I just want to show you that learn to recognize those because you'll see those elsewhere on the back of products and, uh, and other places where they meant is mentioned voltage. So as we keep going around, the next set of ranges is for resistance. And then we have this one in red, which is actually another resistance scale. This is for measuring what's called continuity, where I don't really want to know the number. I just want to know, maybe I have a, I have a wire, and I want to know, does one end connect to the other end? So I could, I could touch my probe on one end and the other end, and what, I, what this will give me is a little buzz, a little audible sound that says, yep, yep, there's a connection. All right, the next set of scales, or there's one scale in white, is for transistors. That uses these little holes here. We're not, we're not going to use those, so we'll just ignore that. All right, the next set of ranges are for me measuring current. We might, we might use those. And then I said we have the AC volts and then back to off. So, so basically there's the three things we're going to measure is DC voltage, resistance, and, and possibly current. <clears throat> All right, the normal procedure, no matter what you're going to measure, you have your leads plugged in. You're going to select one set of these three ranges. And then, now typically, if you don't know what you're going to measure, you don't know the value, you want to set this to a higher range. But let me give you a clue about voltage DC. First, every battery, pretty much, you have in your house is going to be less than 20 volts. So you could start on 20 volts. And actually, 20 volts gives me a, a plenty good reading. I'll show you what I mean. So for this 9 volt battery, I can test these and it gives me the reading of about 9.5. Now notice the nominal number it says is 9 volts, but it, but it really, when it's new, has more like 9.5 volts. Now I have a couple AA batteries, let's check those. I think one is newer than another, so one is Okay, there's like a new one is 1.58, 1.59 volts. And this other one, okay, it's still good, but this is 1.50. So it's probably not really brand new. But say if I wanted to know that more precisely, because it's now I see it's less than 20 volts, I could turn this down to the 2 volt scale. And then, and then I could read that, okay, that's really one 
maybe it's 1.505 volts. So I get a more precise reading if I use the lower scale. But for most everything we do, I don't really need it that accurately. So I just leave it on 20 volts. And any kind of batteries I measure, I just, I just do it that way. All right, to measure resistance, we're going to use one of these green scales. And again, the rule applies. If you don't know, set it to a higher number than what you want. Now, for example, I'm going to measure this resistor, which I happen to know is 220 ohms. So the 200 scale would not work, because that's not high enough. But let's, let's say I don't really know, and I'll put it on the 20K scale. Okay, then I'll... Now, just another tip. One of the things I often do when I'm going to measure resistance, I often touch the probes together first, and it should go to zero or pretty close to zero. That, that just lets me know everything's working. My leads are plugged in. There's no breaks in the wire in my leads. Just, just a little habit I get into. Okay, so let's go to our little resistor and touch the probes to the wires. And it, Now, this is going to be tricky. How do I read this decimal point? It says 0.21. Now, if you notice, by the decimal point, there's the number... There's a little 20 there. You can see that there. See that 20. And that's telling me I'm on the 20K scale, or 20,000. But it also tells me that that decimal point, to the left of the decimal point, is really where the 20 would go. Or the, so that's like, if it was 20,000, it'd be 20.2. Or where the decimal is, it's really a comma. So that, so that, I know that's twenty thousand comma two. You know, so this, so what that's telling me is that this is really two hundred and ten. So let's put that on the next lower scale to get a better reading. And again, I see two two zero or two two one nine. But again, notice there's this time there's a little two next to the. And hard to get this to focus here. Two right next to the decimal. So, so that's where the thousands, it tells you that's the thousands column to the left of that decimal. So to the right of the decimal is, is the hundreds column. So this is 219 or about, 200 and, about 220. So that, I was expecting to read 220 and that's, that's what it's telling me. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention. Let's go, let's go back to voltage. Let's take our battery again. What if I switch the test leads around the other direction? If I put the red on the negative terminal and the black on the positive, I still get a reading. It just gives me a negative sign in front. So it clues me in that, I, that, that the plus and the minuses are, are, are reversed. So it doesn't really matter which way you test the voltage. You'll get either a positive 1.5 or a negative 1.5 volts. All right, measuring current is, is a little more difficult. And the reason is, to measure current, you have to put the multimeter in the circuit. So let me show you here. Let's bring up another. Uh, let's bring up a circuit we had before. This is our simple LED circuit with a LED and a resistor. So if I want to measure voltage, okay, I bring out a little out of my kit of parts here. I bring out a, the equivalent of a, of a multimeter and that measures voltage and so I could connect the, the wires here to you know for maybe both ends of my component oops I missed the missed the spot here I'm having trouble let me zoom in a little more so if I connect this from here let's put it let's put it right on that The 
when I start the simulation, says, okay, so there's two volts. Now that'll be interesting. We'll talk about that again in a minute. There's five volts coming out of the Arduino, and the what's called the voltage drop on this component says two volts. Now if I if I put that on the resistor, it's like moving my test leads. I test it again. Notice I get about three volts. We'll we'll talk about that some more later. But what I want to show is how to measure current. Now, current is flowing through the resistor, flew through the LED, and back. I've got to put the multimeter in the circuit. So what I'm going to do, I'll stop the simulation because I'm going to change the wires. I'm going to take this wire, select it, and I'm going to stick my meter in instead of that wire. So what I'll do is I'll put this end of the wire up here. And just because I'll take a red wire and take it from there to there. And now when I start the simulation, that's reading the current. So the current is flowing through that meter, through the LED, through the resistor. So so I need to I, I need to put the meter in the circuit. Now let me show you that in the real thing, for example. If I want to, if I want to do that here, I do. I have. I would do the same thing. So here, let me make sure this little circuit works. I've got the same circuit I just showed you in Tinkercad. And if I want to measure the current, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna select maybe one of my current scales. What's confusing me is these. The high numbers are on this end, and it goes down this one because it because it rotates in the same direction. I, I kind of I tend to expect the higher scales to be at the top here, but they're not; they're at the bottom. So let's take this little wire and let's just move it to someplace else, so it's no longer connected. When I connect this circuit up, turn or power it on, the light doesn't go on. Because I've got a I've got a gap between here. But if I connect it with my test leads, if I connect from here to that wire, notice the light came back on, and, and you can't see because I'm in your way. Let me do that again. And now you can see I have 12, and it's 12.6. And, and notice again that where the there's a number 20 there. So this is the 20 milliamp scale. So that's really like a like a, a comma. So I have to move, really the decimal point moves over. So that's really let's let's try a smaller scale. See what it says. Okay, that one is is too small, so it doesn't read. That was two milli. And that two milliamps that was less than the the twelve milliamps, so it just didn't read it. So that's the best I can read. It says so I've got basically twelve point six milliamps. It's it's I, I could say it's just it's just tricky to uh, to know where the decimal point goes. It helps to know what you're measuring to be able to, to get it right. So just just to review on our with our multimeter, measuring voltage is easy. You just set the scale and touch your test leads to the thing you want to measure and you're good to go. To measure resistance, I forgot to say one thing very important, is either the circuit has to be off, or more importantly, the, the, the component completely disconnected. Because the way the multimeter works on resistance scales, it actually supplies about 3 volts, maybe it's 0.3 volts, it's a very low voltage it applies and runs through the component, and it's actually sensing the current that goes through it to be able to calculate the resistance. So I want to have the component not be in an active circuit that's running current through it. Otherwise, 
my meter is me reading something. It's reading current from there that, that it, it, it didn't put in. So to, to measure resistance, the thing has to be like by itself or, or turned off. And then to measure amps, you have to connect the ammeter inside the circuit. So to measure each kind of thing is a little bit different. So I'll just give you a clue. Most of the time, you're going to be measuring volts. Most of the time you use a voltmeter, it's to measure volts. So some things to try on your own. Feel free to experiment with your, your multimeter. First is, is find some batteries that are lying around your house. They're, you're going to have, maybe you have new ones, in, you know, where you keep your batteries. Maybe you've got a flashlight that's got batteries in it or the remote control of your TV. Take the batteries out and see what the voltage says compared to the nominal voltage it says on it. Another, another thing to experiment with is take some of your resistors out of your kit and measure the resistance of those you know, using one of, you know, this green resistor, one of these scales, probably like 20K or 2K. And, and then take out your resistor wheel and, and see if you can also tell by the color band what the resistance is and see how close the resistance you measure comes to what it's supposed to be. And remember, these, these all have a plus or minus 5 tolerance. You can calculate what that is and, and see, are they within the tolerance? And I'm, I'm quite sure they will be. Okay, one more bonus tip. I have found by mistake that sometimes when I turn this meter on, by mistake, I can push this button. Just because my hand pushes on the button. And if I, and if I turn that, if I, if I push that by mistake, and don't notice that little symbol up there, and I go to try to measure voltage, I see nothing. And I think, huh. Is my meter broken already or the wires broken? And the reason is it's holding the zero value. So this button can be useful, say if you have a, a reading and you want to hold it in there, then you can let go of your probes and it stays there. But it also can kind of fool you if you have, if you push the button when it says zero and you get nothing. And remember to turn it off when you're done. And like I say, I, I typically like wind my w wires around and then if you want you could put a rubber band around it but I kind of put it away like that rather than disconnecting the leads every time. All right so in the next video let's continue with this lesson we're but we're going to talk more about the mathematical relationship between voltage resistance and current and how does that show up in series and parallel circuits. All right, I look forward to seeing you, seeing you in the next video.